Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, we're going to start to get into the nuts and bolts of Media Composer, really all that's happening under the surface, other than just bringing footage in, dropping it into your timeline, and exporting. We're going to start talking in depth about bins. And we're going to talk about that over the next few lessons. And I thought something that was important to talk about in the first lesson is something that I always find exceptionally annoying. And you're going to notice it right away once you start transcoding a Media Composer. And even when you start duplicating clips or making copies of sequences, moving them here, moving them there, moving you know copies of clips here and there. And that's you're going to start to notice things like copy.01, copy.02, final underscore, underscore final, final rev, underscore rev, rev final. And you sort of know that repetitive sort of, you know, in air quotes, tag that ends up at the end of clips and sequences inside a Media Composer. So in this lesson, I want to talk about find and replace because it's something you're going to use right away after you're done transcoding all your clips and getting in and adjusting clip names one by one. You know, when you're dealing with a clip or two is not a big deal. When you're dealing with hundreds or potentially thousands of clips, this process is going to save you an absolute ton of time. All right, now, as always, before we get rolling, I want to give a big shout out to our sponsor, Video Guys. As always, I want to remind you that if you're looking to renew your Media Composer subscription license or to basically get in and get a new subscription license, you can head on down into the show notes below. I've put the three most common links that you're going to need over on the Video Guys website to get yourself up and running with the Media Composer subscription as quickly and as pain-free as possible. Don't forget to use that coupon code of MC101 when making your purchase. And tell Video Guys that I gave a big hello and a big thank you to them for sponsoring these tutorials. Also, don't forget, if you are looking for personal one-on-one -on -one Media Composer training, you can always send me an email at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. I tailor all the lessons for exactly what you need to know. They're all recorded, and I always make sure that everybody leaves with every question that they need answered, answered, so they can keep moving on with their workflow as quickly and as efficiently as possible. All right, I think that's enough of an introduction. Let's just get into Media Composer. And let's get started. All right, so let's Command or Alt and Tab into Avid Media Composer. Now, moving forward from this lesson, we'll deal with our horror footage courtesy of CineStudy. But for this lesson, what I'm going to do is give you the example of we just brought in all of this footage and we just transcoded it. And a very common situation you can get into where we're going to use Find and Replace, as I mentioned in the introduction. Now, I do want to talk about a couple other very small concepts that don't warrant their own tutorials, but I think that they're important for me to show you very early on. And the first one is a very quick way to identify what all of these little icons represent. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that the tool that I'm going to show you is one that can really mess you up if you're not paying attention to what you're doing. So be very careful what you do in this tool when I show it to you, or it can lead to a lot of confusion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate right over here to the fast menu. We're going to drop that down and I'm going to navigate right down here to set bin display. Now I'm not sure if I've talked about this in a previous lesson. I don't think I have, but if I can, you could just skip ahead to the next part. If you are just catching this tutorial for the first time, you can follow along. Now you'll see in here, here are all the icons, not all of them, but most of them that will appear in a bin. The only one that's actually not in here is what just an audio clip on its own looks like. It'll actually look like one of these, but just with a little waveform icon, all right? Now, again, in here, like I said, you gotta be very careful what you're doing. You might be thinking, well, Kev, who really cares? What difference does it make? Well, if you come in and you just start clicking or selecting and deselecting certain things or certain clips like master clips, like linked master clips, what this is doing is it's telling Media Composer, what do you want to show in the bin? So if I deselect master clips, deselect linked master clips, and I say go, the bin's suddenly going to completely appear empty, although nothing's been deleted, nothing's been removed, so don't worry about that. It's just not being displayed. So what I'm going to do is navigate right up here, back down to our set bin display. I'm simply going to turn those two back on. I'm now going to say OK, and all of my clips will now appear back in my bin. Now, let's talk about another quick shortcut that you're going to want to know. Command or Control in E on the keyboard is to, and I always get sift and sort confused. Basically, what we want to do is organize things in ascending or descending order 
based on the alphabet or based on basically numerically. All right. So let's just select the name column here. I'm just going to bring this over here like such. And what I'm going to do is simply hit command or control and E on the keyboard. And you'll now see that by doing that, I've now sorted alphabetically from A all the way down in this case to T. Now, the question, of course, does come up. How do you sort now in reverse order? What you're going to do, Control, Alt, and E, Command, Option, and E on the keyboard to reverse that order. Now, keep in mind, like I said, this works alphabetically, or if we head on over, do I actually have the time code here? Let's just go over to the Start column, and I'm just going to hit Command or Control and E, and you'll now see that it's going to sort slash sift, basically from the lowest value to the highest value, or I can again hit Control, Alt, and E, Command, Option, and E, to reverse that order. Now what's great about this is that it also works with your clip icons. So if I select that column and I hit Control or Command and E, you'll now see that it's put all of the master clips together and all of the linked clips together. Now you might think to yourself, self, you know what we might be able to do here? We might be able to navigate right back up here to the drop down, come back down to set bin display and simply turn off the linked master clips once we've linked and transcoded everything, then you won't have to worry about seeing them anymore. And that is true. However, what is going to happen if you try to link to a clip and bring it into your bin? Media Composer will say, hey, the clip has appeared. However, it's just not visible. So I normally don't recommend doing that. What I normally recommend doing is that if you want to take those linked master clips and do something with them, just create a new bin, call it linked clips, and then simply take those clips and move them over there like I am going to do right now. All right. And now let's talk about what's going on with these clips here. And one of the most annoying things that you will deal with inside a Media Composer is the fact that when it consolidates, pardon me, uh, when it transcodes, not so much when it consolidates, but when it transcodes, you'll see that what it does so that it differentiates the linked clip from the master clip is that it comes in and it adds a dot new dot one. Now, I only have like 10 clips in this bin, so it's actually not that big of a deal for me to go in and delete them. But let's say hypothetically, I didn't want to just delete dot new dot one. I wanted to delete dash utc dot new dot one. And you can come in here and then you can select, oh, I didn't quite select it right there. You can, nope, still didn't select it. There we go. And we can do this, you know, a clip at a time. But if you're dealing with hundreds of clips, remember, Media Composer is going to do this every time you transcode. Here's another situation where it's going to do it. Let me take this clip. I'm just going to call up this clip here. I'm just going to create a new sequence. All right. Sequence is called untitled sequence dot two. I'm just going to start duplicating it. Now, there's that sort of running joke where you call something dot final dot new dot new dot oh one dot final final rev final rev two, etc, etc. And you want to just get in very quickly and you just want to clean things up a little bit. So how are we going to do that? Well, that's where we're actually going to use find and replace. Now, one thing I normally encourage you to do is that if you're going to be working in the bin, like I said, we're going to be doing across the next uh, next few lessons, at least if you want to get into the fast menu and deal with something that's just about the bin, make sure you don't have anything selected. So you get the actual short menu. If you have a clip selected, and you navigate up to that fast menu, you're going to notice that you have a whole bunch of options in here now, which actually represents not only that fast bin menu, but it also represents the clip menu as well. All right. So let's now get in. Let's clean up our transcoded imports. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to select what I want to remove first. I'm going to select it all and I'm going to copy it command or control and C. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come to that fast menu. I just didn't take my own advice there. There we go. I'm going to come back to the fast menu. I'm going to come down here to find and replace. Now you'll notice that what happens is a new window doesn't appear, but a little sort of sub window has appeared at the top of the bin that we can actually just close and the bin will go back to normal. But what I'm going to do is just call this up. You could actually leave this up the entire time you're editing if you want. And what I now have the ability to do is to simply do just that, to come in and to find something, in our case, dash utc dot new dot one And I'm going to take it and I'm going to paste it in there. And you'll notice that as soon as I do that, it immediately highlights them all, which is what I'm going to want. Now, you'll notice that we have actually one called dot utc dot new dot two that we'll deal with in just a second. And in our case, what we want to do is I don't want to replace it with anything. Like I don't want to come down and call this real or something like that. Because if I did that and I hit replace, 
to select one or to you know replace all and select them all it would actually replace that with the word real what i want to do is just remove it all together all right so i'm just going to leave replace as replace it with nothing and i'm going to say replace all and you'll notice now that they have all disappeared now i did have one here dot new dot two you'll see here there it is dot new dot two and i'm simply going to i could just replace the one because there is only one in here now here's another perfect example of where i would use something like this i hate having the hyphens between everything it just drives me a little bit batty so what you can always do is simply come in here i'm going to not remove the hyphens what i want to do is I want to replace them with a space i'm going to say replace all and now they're all gone now keep in mind this only works with editable parameters for example the creation date you cannot edit it is what it is uh, anything else in here the tracks you cannot remove the dashes from the tracks they are there forever but this is now a very quick way that we can easily get in especially after we consolidate pardon me again especially after we transcode to come in and say okay well let's remove dot two dot copy dot one and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that, I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to replace it. In this case, let's replace it with nothing, just so we can whittle this down a little bit. I'm just going to say replace all. Very nice. I'm now going to take dot copy dot one. I'll look at that, and I'm going to say replace all. And you'll now see that even though I don't want everything called untitled sequence, using find and replace is a fantastic way to get in especially after you transcode and quickly remove all of those dot new dot ones or anything else that you might want to remove quickly without having to do this whole process manually to keep the editing process or the organization process moving forward as efficiently as possible all right, so I think that's a good place to leave off for this lesson. Like I said in the intro and like I said in the body, we're going to be talking a lot about bins across the next few lessons because they really are the central focus of your workflow other than directly in the timeline. And there's so many things that you're going to want to need to know inside of your bins to help keep your workflow as efficient as possible. Now, as always, I want to remind you that if you are looking for Media Composer licenses via subscription, definitely check out our sponsor video guys. You can check out the links in the show notes down below. Use that coupon code of MC101 to get that 5% discount when you're making your purchase. And as always, if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. Thanks a lot for watching.